Good morning. We're so glad you're joining us here at 121 this morning. Now, by this time, we all acknowledge the awkwardness. It's awkward every week, but um, some of us, have, some of you guys have shared with us that it's kind of weird singing with us in your living room, but I just want to encourage you, if you don't like how you sing, just turn the volume of your TV up really, really loud, and that'll just take care of everything for you. But otherwise, whether you're in your bed, on your couch, let's worship Jesus today because he is worthy of, our, of his praise. Give the Lord praise this morning wherever you are. Sweeter, all the earth will see the 
Savior Christ the King. There is none more glorious, forever more victorious. All the earth will see. All the earth will see. Yeah. To the King of all kings, the King that will reign forever. And saints sing along in a mending song, a song that will sing forever. En Spanish, I will read, uh, voy a leer por Salmo 96 en español. Dice: Cantad al Señor un cántico nuevo. Cantad al Señor toda la tierra. Cantad al Señor, bendecir su nombre. Proclamad de día en día las buenas nuevas de su salvación. Contad su gloria entre las naciones sus maravillas entre todos los pueblos. Porque grande es el Señor y muy digno de ser alabado. Temible es Él sobre todos los dioses. Porque todos los dioses de los pueblos son ídolos, mas el Señor hizo los cielos. Gloria y majestad están delante de Él. Poder y hermosura en su santuario. Tributad al Señor. Oh familias de los pueblos, tributad al Señor gloria y poder. Tributad al Señor la gloria de vida a su nombre. Traed ofrenda y entrad en sus atrios. Adorad al Señor en vestiduras santas. Temblad ante su presencia toda la tierra. Decid entre las naciones, el Señor reina. Ciertamente el mundo está bien afirmado será inconmovible Él juzgará a los pueblos con equidad alégrense los cielos y regocíjese la tierra ruja el mar y cuanto contiene gócese el campo y todos los que en él hay 
Entonces todos los pueblos y todos los árboles del bosque cantarán con gozo delante del Señor porque Él viene. Porque Él viene a juzgar la tierra, juzgará al mundo con justicia y a los pueblos con su fidelidad. Amén. Amén.
angels are the sound of angel songs and all this for a king we could join and sing all to Christ the King how constant how divine the song of ours will rise how constant how divine this love of ours will rise will rise Father, we thank you that no matter what the circumstances are, we can still praise you and we can worship you from wherever we're at. We thank you that your word will go out no matter what is going on in this world. We thank you for the hope that we have in you because of what your son Jesus did for us. Lord, I pray that our hearts would be aligned with you today, no matter where we're at good times, bad times, maybe we're just lukewarm. I pray no matter where we're at, that we would hear from you today, that you would just meet us and that you would lift us up so that we could go out and lift up your people. Give us a song of hope today. Let us praise you and ascribe glory to you and testify to your good name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, 121. Good morning, church. Good morning, world. Thank you for worshiping with us today. It is just so awesome to know that no matter what is going on, we can still worship our God because he is unstoppable and his word is going to lift us up no matter what is going on. So just wanted to say again, thank you for worshiping it with us today. 
Uh, I'm the youth minister for 121, and it's been challenging for sure being a youth minister, not being able to see students. But let me just tell you something. Over the last couple of weeks, the students have showed out. They have shown God glory and praise through all of the things that have been going on. I just want to take a few moments to share with you some of the things that have been going on. Students have taken advantage of their Instagram stories and social media and have been doing things like uh, see scripture, share a scripture, where they uh, would post something on their Instagram story, a, a scripture that's been really uh, a, a time of hope or a scripture of hope, and they've nominated other students to go and share scripture with others, and it's been a cool way to be uh, to, to testify to God's goodness, even in the midst of this tough time. We've done as a student ministry challenges to help local businesses around the area uh, where students have taken old childhood pictures and reenacted, reenacted those photos. Uh, the best ones have been uh, getting rocket boxes and pizzas delivered uh, to them. And so we've done a lot of really cool things. And of course, we have not forsaken the, the opportunity to meet with each other all throughout the week, including today. Uh, life groups are meeting grades 6 through 12 virtually uh, via Zoom. And so they're getting into God's word and they're being a community around each other, even though we can't meet physically. Uh, and so it's been really cool to be a part of what is going on. And, and God has been blessing the student ministry. And I'm so happy to say that. Of course, they're still doing things uh, like uh, they're putting on Instagram and uh, other places on social media their, their favorite worship song uh, and, and nominating others to post the same thing. And so uh, this is a great time to, to ascribe glory to God by listening to what he has to say through, through worship and in songs. And for me personally, uh, it's been an ex extremely tough time over the last couple of weeks my son, my oldest son, recently got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and it's a lifelong autoimmune uh, disease that he's going to have to deal with. And so me and my wife, of course, uh, have just been going through ups and downs as far as emotions go. And, and last week, in, in fact, I was running, exercising, as we all should exercise, at least a little bit. Uh, I was running, and as I started out on my run, I was overwhelmed by these emotions. I know many of you who are watching right now, you, you know, if you're a parent, you're, one of your kids gets diagnosed with an illness like that, you just, it just hurts you inside. And there's lots of emotions that can be overwhelming. And I experienced that to a point where I almost, I just had to almost just buckle down. And, and in that moment, uh, I was listening to a song, a worship song called King of Glory. I think it's interesting. It's from Psalm 2410. It's, if you have the Holy Bible app, that's the, the verse of the day. Uh, and in that moment, God spoke to me. He said, uh, don't lose hope. Don't give up. There is always hope. There's peace in the storm. And in that moment, in my lowest moment, God gave me a song of hope that lifted me up. And I just want to encourage you today that as we look into Psalm 96, God's wanting to give you a song of hope that's going to lift you up and you can praise him no matter what the circumstance is. Get up, get out of your chair, and I want, in the next 30 seconds, I want you to do 30 push-ups. All right, ready, set, go. If you legitimately did those uh, 30 push-ups, if you go into the chat room and say, hey, I knocked out those 30 push-ups and uh, all of the glory of God this morning, uh, we appreciate you gathering with us uh, to worship and what a beautiful time and praise and song. Uh, this week, I was reading uh, the Culture Translator and Jermaine uh, turned us on to that a while back. I'd encourage any parents, if you're not subscribed to the Culture Translator, uh, they do an excellent job of uh, just keeping us up to speed on what's happening in the uh, teenage world with our kids and uh, even our, the child age uh, of things that are going on and ways to really be able to keep up with what's going on in the culture and to communicate with our, with our students well. Uh, and this week they told a story about Anne Frank. And 
Uh, when she was 13 years old, uh, she had written in her diary uh, something in regard to uh, what had been happening with her and uh, really what was amounted to a, a two-year quarantine for her and her family. Uh, and it wasn't due to the spread of a virus, rather it was due to the spread of an, uh, a deadly ideology. Uh, and they would hide in the secret attic of her father's business, uh, and they did this for, uh, for two years. Uh, and they lived in constant fear uh, of being exposed. But this was one entry in her diary of, of a way that she dealt with that, that fear and, and that isolation. She said the best remedy for those, this is coming from a 13-year-old, the best remedy for those who are afraid, lonely, or unhappy is to go outside somewhere they can be quite alone with the heavens, with nature, and with God. And I read that in light of the psalm where we find ourselves uh, on this day and just thought that was a powerful uh, reminder for us to keep our heads lifted towards the heavens our heads lifted towards God, the God of nature. And as we do that and keep our eyes firmly fixed on him, uh, then that fear uh, that can so easily creep in uh, will be overcome. If you would, turn in your Bibles uh, to Psalm 96. And I hope that in uh, every living room, every bedroom, every kitchen, uh, wherever it is that you're worshiping in this moment, uh, that you would uh, turn in your Bible to Psalm 96. We've been thinking about God's heart for the nations. This is a theme that runs all throughout Scripture and the study that we're doing in our life groups and in our time alone with God and uh, in our times as we gather here to worship. Uh, we're just thinking about that particular theme. Uh, and it's a theme that runs around God's ultimate passion, which is the glory for His own name. Uh, that is what we're about is to be about God's glory and God is about his own glory. That's where the most satisfaction and pleasure comes for everyone. And we've seen the uh, purpose and blessing that flows through that uh, idea. It began with Abraham in Genesis 12 and, uh, and then God intends to bless, uh, to give favor uh, to all the families of the earth, all the nations of the earth uh, through Israel that he established as his own people. The Psalms all throughout uh, carry this same theme, this same idea of God's glory uh, and God's glory among the nations, that, that, that God is for the nations. He's for all ethnicities, all peoples. Uh, the background for this Psalm is in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Uh, and if you're familiar with Old Testament history, this will make sense. If you're not, let me just give you a big idea. Uh, there was an ark, Ark of the Covenant. It was probably about yay big was the size of the, the chest that was called the ark. Uh, and it was the, the place where God's presence would dwell, a symbol of that presence uh, in the tabernacle, the early place of worship for Israel. And when we come to 1 Chronicles 16, the Ark of the Covenant had not been uh, where it was supposed to be in the, in the tabernacle. And there's a place now where it's arrived uh, and now uh, it has come into the city of Jerusalem, the city of David, uh, and the covenant is there. The Ark of the Covenant is there uh, and the people uh, are uh, in all kinds of celebration and praise and worship of God because the symbol of his presence has now entered into the city of Jerusalem uh, and Asaph is assigned by David uh, to give thanks uh, and that the singers uh, to give praise to God. Uh, and the psalm where we are today, Psalm 96, is the psalm uh, that was proclaimed, the song that was sung uh, to God when the Ark of the Covenant came into Jerusalem in 1 Chronicles 16. I'd like for us to think about uh, this running theme of God's ultimate passion for his own glory that comes through uh, the blessings of the nation of Israel for all the nations. Uh, I'd like for us to think about today how the Psalms describe it 
And in this day that we're living uh, with the coronavirus and all the fear uh, that is associated with it, I, I want to say about this main idea that, that there is God glorifying worship as an antidote to fear. God glorifying worship as an antidote to fear. Let's unpack this Psalm 96 verses 1 through 6, the first section. I'd like for us to think about it under this anchoring, this idea of sing and tell. Sing and tell. Now I know not everybody enjoys singing. Uh, I know that uh, not everyone feels like they have the kind of voice uh, that they are comfortable singing with. Uh, and yet, I hope you'll be so encouraged by this psalm, uh, as I am, and, and that one key piece of our worship, of God-glorifying worship, is to sing, uh, and it's to sing praise to God, who deserves all glory. Sing and tell, uh, and we'll unfold this in the first six verses. Sing to the Lord a new song in verse one. Sing to the Lord who all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. In verse three, tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. Let's go back uh, to verses one and two. And what we see is a threefold repetition to sing. And anytime we see something repeated in Scripture, uh, it was for emphasis. It was instruction uh, to sing, sing. It's repeated three times that we are to sing. And who do we sing to? Sing to the Lord. We don't just sing because uh, it's a catchy tune uh, or it's our favorite song of the day. Now, there can be really substantive favorite songs of the day, and there can be really catchy tunes to songs. But when we sing, we're singing to someone. Sing to the Lord. It's not just because we like the way it sounds. Sing to the Lord. Our focus, our mind's attention, our heart's affection is focused on God himself when we sing. Sing to the Lord a new song. Now, who is it that's to do the singing? Sing to the Lord all the earth. All the earth. Not just a few people, not just those who have really strong voices and seem to be really gifted in singing. Sing to the Lord a new song and sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Someone put it this way, who's the choir? And depending on what kind of church background you have, uh, you might have been in a place where for years you had a choir loft in the church where you attended and, and, and there was those people who were the choir that sang. Those seemed to be the more gifted people in the church. But, but the psalmist is saying, no, it's not just the gifted ones. It's not just the choir. Sing to the Lord all the earth. That's, that's all of us. That's everybody that is a worshiper of God, that we sing to him all the earth. It's really tough to feel excluded by a statement that says, sing to the Lord, all the earth. We're all invited in to sing, to sing to the Lord. And what is it that we sing? What do we sing? Verse one, we sing to the Lord a new song, a new song. What does it mean? Does that mean we, we always have to come up with a new song? No, I think what he's saying is this. Just like in Lamentations, where the writer says that the Lord's mercies and loving kindnesses are new every day, we have a new song every day, even if it's the same song we've sung for years. It's a new song that's fresh for the moment. And our lives are dynamic and moving. They're not stagnant. And, and a song that we sang years ago may be a new song on this day. A song that we sang a few months ago might be a new song on this day, depending on our circumstances. When Jermaine was running the other day and he talked about the song that God brought, that wasn't the first time he heard the song, but that was a new song for that day, for that moment. Sing to the Lord a new song. Uh, I've been singing in the car uh, the last couple of days, a song that years ago, it's one of my favorites, uh, and it's uh, called You Are My King. 
uh, or amazing love. And, and it's a song I've just sung over and over this morning and yesterday. It's been a fresh song, a new song for me to think about the forgiveness of God and His amazing love. Uh, it may be songs for you like Victory in Jesus, and, and that may be a new song today. Or depending on your circumstance, It is well with my soul. That's a new and fresh song depending on the moment. Or the old rugged cross when we think about this Easter week. And, or glorious day when we think about uh, the resurrection and, and we've been called to come running out of the grave when we hear our name. Or, or the song, You're Beautiful to God Himself. Or Your Great Name that we sing to Him. And then I was turned on on that culture translator uh, to a new... Uh, uh, I don't know what you call it that's gotten started. It's uh, an app, I think. So some, some Good News is the name of it. And John Krasinski of The Office is the one that's hosting it. Uh, but all it is is good news. Uh, and we were watching that uh, this weekend. And there was uh, a couple that they had video of. Uh, and it was an older lady uh, in a nursing home. Uh, and her husband, I'm, I'm guessing they're easily in their 70s, maybe 80. Uh, and she has dementia. He can't come in and see her because of the, uh, the, the quarantines. Uh, and there's just this video of him and her. He's outside the window. And they're just singing Amazing Grace. And it's not, it's not in tune. It's pretty brutal, quite candidly. But it's amazing to hear this couple that, who knows how long they've been married and just separated by the window. It's a new song. The new song for them this week. This is good news. This idea of a new song and sing to the Lord and bless His name. Uh, it runs throughout the Psalms. In Psalm 33, it says, sing a new song joyfully. So we don't just sing a new song to the Lord. We sing a new and fresh song to Him and with a, a joy in our heart. In Psalm 40, verse 3, there's a new song in my heart. And many will trust the Lord. That, that when we have that fresh new song, uh, that people will see that and they'll trust the Lord. Oh, and it's favor to his name, glory to his name. I have to tell you, it is, it's sad to me today. This is the first time that I've been in this building in the last few weeks that it's been sad to me. Uh, David was praying when we started just a few minutes ago or before we started, and he he said, God, help us as we open our computers this morning and turn on our TVs to worship you. And I don't know why that hit me. Uh, I, I've enjoyed worshiping in here, and I just love the picture of people gathered everywhere worshiping. Uh, but I miss being with you, and, and I miss being side to side and hearing God's praise flow up uh, from this space. And that's... That's a, that's a bummer to me. I've been holding back tears and choking them back for the last 30 minutes. Uh, just sad. I, I, thought, I don't want to open my computer one more time. I'm sick of looking at my computer. Uh, somebody said earlier in the week that they, uh, they feel bad for extroverts. First time I've heard that, I thought, yeah, I feel bad for us too. <laughs> so yesterday I was at the grocery store and I ran into somebody from our church and couldn't even hug them. You had to stand at a distance and have a conversation. And, and I know that's nothing compared to what people are going through in hospitals and uh, those who've had deaths and uh, the medical community and first responders and, and so forth. And you know what? I, I've often said when we come together, I probably say it almost every week, uh, that it's a gift. It's a gift for us to be able to gather and to worship. And you know what? All of a sudden, in one week, it was over. And hopefully God will give us another one of those days. But just like that, one week we're together, the next week we're not. 
And we've been thinking about the underground church. And we have brothers and sisters in Christ. I was just thinking about this during our songs a few minutes ago. And there are people all over the world that know Jesus, that they're singing a new song, uh, not ever in gathered places like we've had the privilege to do. Uh, but theirs is like this all the time in homes. Uh, I read a description this week of a lady that she had a violin and she was visiting a Central Asian country and had the opportunity to be a part of the underground church. And, and they were walking through the, the town and, and kind of secretly. And then they go to this house and she didn't really know exactly what they were doing, but they go into this house and she thought maybe she was going to eat with a family. And then they went into another room and there were about 15 people in that room. And she realized that that was about to be their worship service. And they gathered up and she played her violin and she noticed there were two men in this darkened room in secret where they were worshiping God. And these two men kept looking out the curtain of the window just to see uh, if anybody was coming. I, I can't imagine what it's like to be one of our brothers and sisters in Christ today that that's in prison and, and have been there for years. Uh, and yet there's still a new song in their heart uh, and they emerge stronger and stronger because of who they are in Christ. It's a new song that they sing. And, and I can... Just reimagine a day when we're regathered and we can sing and praise a new song of worship to God. And then for all over the world, that there'll be a day uh, when we can reimagine uh, and imagine that peoples from every tribe, tongue, and nations that will be gathered together uh, to worship Him unhindered. We won't be looking at a screen, but we'll be in the presence of the living God, the glorious God. Uh, and even when it's hard, we still, we sing our praise to him. We sing our praise to him in our homes. We're going to sing a song at the end of our service today. And I just want to encourage you to not cut this off when I'm done. But will you stay to the end? And will you just sing with all you've got at the end? It's a privilege that we have to be able to sing worship to God. When we're in our cars, we get to sing to him, our personal time with God. And it's a beautiful chorus to him when he hears us sing his praises all around the world. I heard somebody say the other day, one of the gifts that's been for them and their family in worshiping God in this time in their living room is to hear just the distinct sound of each child, the voice of each of their children singing to the Lord. In Colossians 3.16 we're told that we are to sing to the Lord and it's to be anchored in God's word. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And part of our worship is to turn around and tell. It's not just to sing it's to tell in, in Psalm 96, verse 3, or actually verse 2, at the end of verse 2, it says, proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Uh, that word tidings, uh, I've sung that forever you know, at Christmas time. It's like in one of our Christmas songs or something, you know, the good tidings of joy or something like that. And I've never really paid attention to what tidings meant. So yesterday or this week when I was studying, I looked it up and, and tidings means news. You probably already knew that. Uh, sometimes I just start saying words and I forget to actually see what they mean. But what he's saying, proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Proclaim good news. Uh, our worship, God glorifying worship is not just a song. It is a song. It's more than a song. Uh, worship is the essential beauty and weight and worth of God. And the way we live our lives, every bit of it is worship to God. And, and the way we tell about him is worship to God. So there's that vertical lifting our eyes towards God. And then it flows out towards telling other people about him. And we're just telling him the latest thing that God's done. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. What did he do for you yesterday? What did you see him do across the nation or across the world? Proclaim good tidings from day to day. What is his rescue today? And tell of his glory among the nations. 
Talk about it. Tell about it. The assumption would be when we read the Old Testament that Israel was not talking about God to the nations. They were holding it to themselves. If they weren't off chasing other gods, they weren't telling other people about God. And the psalmist is saying, tell of his glory among the nations. It's not just for the nation of Israel. It's not just for them. Just like it's not just for me or for you. God has a heart for the nations. His wonderful deeds among all the peoples. Tell about it. Sing it in a song to God and tell about it. Tell about all his wonderful deeds. Tell them to all the peoples. One way that 121's doing this right now is the testimony challenge. I think I mentioned it last week and several people have shared their testimonies. There's their stories, their spiritual journeys uh, and have just put their phone on them and then uh, are playing it and then loading it and it's happening on Facebook. Uh, and there's several. They're, they are so encouraging. They're encouraging to other Christians uh, and they're encouraging uh, to people who aren't to maybe consider something about God's glory. And every one of the stories has pointed out the glory uh, of God and pointed out how God rescued them and pointed out what Jesus has done for them, how he's rescued them from perfectionism, how he's rescued them from control, how he's rescued them from rebellious lives, how he's rescued them from appearances, how he's rescued them in such a way that the grace and love of Jesus Christ is what gets all the glory. They're telling of his glory. Will you join us in that? That's a way that we can tell of his glory. It's not the only way, it's just a way to do that. Why do we do this in verse four? Because great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He's great. He is awesome in who he is and he's greatly to be praised. He's to be feared above all gods. He's to be reverenced and honored above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples in verse five are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. All the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord he made the heavens. The word here for gods and idols is a similar word in Hebrew, which is what the Old Testament was written in, similar to uh, the word that is used for God here. It's, like, it's a play on words that if we had the original language, we could see that play. And what he's saying is that God is worthy and that the idols are worthless. Idols are worthless God actually is the one who made the heavens, the very place where the idols dwell. Uh, and yet people bow down and worship idols all over the world. He says they're worthless. For Psalm 115 verse eight, those who made them will become like them. Everyone who trusts in them. We actually become like the God that we worship. And if we worship the God of the Bible, then we'll become like him. If we worship any other idol or God, we'll become like them. And what the psalmist says, he describes the idols. He says they have eyes that can't see and mouths that can't speak. They have ears that can't hear and noses that can't smell. They have hands that can't feel and feet that can't walk. The idols, they're empty. They have nothing to offer. And... When we worship or give worth to idols, then we become empty. We become just like them. God is a God who's not empty. He's a God of joy, pleasure, hope, peace. And when we lean into him and worship him, we become a people of hope, peace, joy, and love. What are those idols that we might struggle with in America. Gordon Dahl said it this way, most middle-class Americans tend to worship their work, work at their play, and play at their worship. Not everybody. And as someone said, I think most of us probably know when we've reached the point where something that is a good thing has become an idol. It's become an essential or a main thing to us. What, what are those? And could you agree with me today that maybe part of what God is doing to bring good out of all that's happening in our world 
is to maybe quickly or maybe it's slowly dismantle idols that we've had. Security, comfort, approval, control, those can all easily be idols. They can be the thing that's the main thing that we're seeking, that we're seeking an approval, that we're seeking comfort, that we're seeking security. We're, we want to be in control. And yet it seems like all of those things are being dismantled right before our very eyes. We yearn to have financial independence. We love our entertainment and our sports. Materialism explodes in our culture. Appearances and the way we look, so crucial. Are, are all of these things bad? No, they're not bad. They're bad when they become the main thing. They're bad when they become the pursuit. They're bad when they become the thing that we center our lives around. Those are idols. That's when we put something at the center of our lives other than God himself. And in Christ, in God, we actually have security. We actually have approval. We actually have comfort. We actually uh, are safe because he's sovereign and he's in control. In Christ, we have all the things we long for. We would not want to miss out seeking God and making sure that we've not improperly made idols of things in our lives. And in this space of time, that we want to own that before God, confess that to him, repent of that before him, turn from it and lean into him for all of these things and for all the things that matter. Verse six, because splendor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Some people cringe at the idea of singing and praising and exalting and telling about God. Some might say that that's uh, dull, and that's boring to do that. I would just have to say today that if we have a heart that's full of Christ, a heart that's full of God, a heart that yearns for Him, there is nothing dull and boring about God one iota. There's, not nothing, there's nothing dull about singing His praise, worshiping Him, honoring Him, telling about Him, living inside and for His glory. Not one dull thing when we know this God. It might be dull and boring if we're living where something else is an idol or we're living apart from him, if we've forgotten him or forsaken him. But I can tell you, person after person that I know and in my own experience, they have in a real and intimate and vital relationship with God. There is nothing dull about God glorifying worship as an antidote to fear because He's splendid and majestic. He's strong and he's beautiful in who he is. Let's sing and tell. Sing and tell. Both of those are worship. This coming week is Easter week. What an enormous opportunity we have to sing of him and to tell of his glory, to invite people in to be a part uh, of these services. Maybe this year, the same people you've been asking for a long time, maybe they'll be game. Maybe they're looking for some hope that they haven't had before. And could this just be a week where we go absolutely crazy inviting people in to get a taste and a glimpse of God's glory and who he is. A second thing in verses seven through 10 is to recognize and declare in verse seven, ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Threefold repetition again. Verse one and two, sing, sing to the Lord. Three times he tells us to do that. Three times in verse seven and eight, ascribe to the Lord. The word ascribe means to recognize or to uh, give credit, to assign, to acknowledge, give credit. And to the Lord, we recognize that he is over all the families of the earth. He's the God of the nations, that he's the one who gets glory and strength, the one who gets the glory for his name. We're doing that all over the world. A few weeks ago, a blog I read by Tim Chalice, 
he had pictures of 35 different uh, people groups all over the world that were gathered in their living rooms, families worshiping God. Oh, give and recognize that the Lord is the God of glory and strength. Oh, families of the earth. And bring an offering and come into his courts. Bring the best of what you have to him. Uh, and in Romans 12, we find that when we come, we're bringing to him our whole selves now. We're bringing all of ourselves to him, uh, for him to use however he wants to work in and through us. And worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him who all the earth. Worship the Lord, bow down before him, kneel before him, lay prostrate before him, tremble before him. He is a God to be recognized, feared, loved, revered, and honored. And who is to do that? All the earth, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Say among the nations. So not only recognize, but tell. Recognize and declare. Recognize and say. Just don't worship God and assume other families of the earth, all the peoples of the earth are. Do it ourselves. Worship God in all of our lives. And then let's say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let's let people know that the Lord reigns. He's God. The Free Burma Rangers, who we had uh, here, just uh, the leader of that uh, a couple of years ago. In Burma right now, in the report this last few weeks, they described a pastor in the Wa territory. 37 years he's been there doing physical care for the people in a war-torn country, taking care of orphans and the sick. In January, there were 169 new believers in that Wa territory. This pastor has been boldly telling about Jesus and the people are speaking of Jesus. They're saying, we're one of those nations and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns, that the Lord reigns. In the past 25 years, 77 new churches have started in that region of the world. They are following the lead that the Lord reigns. And indeed, when the Lord reigns, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. This world is firmly established by God. When it's chaotic to us, when there's fear for us, we just look to the one who reigns. It's firmly established. It will not be moved. And God is a judge who will judge people fairly. He is the judge and he will judge with equity. That's part of what this psalm is about. A major part that they're excited about a righteous judge who will set everything right. And the confidence is in him. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. It is so important that we hear today, it can't be just about pastors that are declaring this message all over the world. And all kinds of people are. For the message of Jesus to get out, just think about what's happened to us. We, we can't invite people into a gathering with us in these weeks. We can invite them to join online. But it's so crucial that both you and I are letting people know that the Lord reigns, that it's about His glory and His name. And I know you probably wouldn't say it that way, but you get what I'm saying. It's important that each of us, that we're sharing with our family, we're sharing with our friends, we're sharing with our neighbors, we're sharing with the people that we work with, that the Lord reigns. And in verses 11 through 13, the nations now join us. Uh, I'm sorry, creation now joins us. So the nations are worshiping God. God glorifying worship is an antidote to fear. And now all of creation joins. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all it contains. Let the field exult and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They'll do this before the Lord, for he is coming. He's coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. What an awesome picture to think about. We get the privilege to sing God's praises. And not only do we get that privilege, but the cre all of creation will join us. And the creation in Romans 8 is longing for the day. It groans just like all of 
Humanity does because of the brokenness and sin in the world. But there's a day when everything will be set right. God will set everything right as the righteous judge. And when everything's set right, then all of creation and all the nations will be gathered together, too numerous to count. And we'll be worshiping God. There will be no fear on that day. No fear to contend with. Let the heavens be glad. The earth rejoice. Imagine, just imagine that the heavens, the the stars and everything that fills the heavens, the birds, let the earth rejoice. Everything that's on the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar. Just think about the waves crashing and that's a praise to God. And then everything that the sea contains, all the fish and everything that's there, all the beauty of the uh, life underneath the waters. Let the field exult. Let the, the grain as it waves back and forth be an honor and a praise to God. Then all and all the trees of the forest, imagine the, the trees just blowing gently in the wind as a praise to God. God glorifying worship. Do you know what's so beautiful about this psalm? Is today is Palm Sunday. And On this day, it wasn't the Ark of the Covenant that entered into Jerusalem, symbolizing the presence of God. Rather, Jesus Christ himself, according to the prophecy in Zechariah 9.9, came in on a donkey riding into the city of Jerusalem. Oh, they spread their coats out on the road, And they had palm branches that they were waving back and forth. Imagine the trees in the forest singing praise to God. And they're waving the palm branches back and forth. And that was a sign of victory. They believed their king had come, their king who would reign. And they believed just coming off of the raising of Lazarus from the dead that Jesus had just done. They just believed that Jesus was coming to do miracle after miracle, that he would be a political savior for them. And they were, they were in it to rescue them from the Romans. And they were crying out in praise to him, Hosanna. And they were saying peace in heaven and glory in the highest. It's exactly what was said by the angels when Jesus was born. They were declaring his praise. And in the midst of that praise, the Pharisees, the religious people who didn't like Jesus at all, they rebuked him. And you know what Jesus said? He said, if these don't sing my praise, then the stones will cry out. The inanimate creation will cry out and sing praise. Oh, we get the privilege to be a part of God's praise along with creation. But you know, that celebration, that praise of Jesus, a few days later subsided. And rather than shouting Hosanna, the crowds no longer waved palm branches and no longer sang a new song of Jesus as King and Savior. Instead, they became his judge. And Jesus would endure a brutal several hours of a mock trial, mockings, beatings, and then being hung on a cross. But something was happening on that cross that most weren't recognizing. That on that cross, Jesus was bearing your sins and mine your shame and mine, your guilt and mine. And then in exchange, when we believe what he did on our behalf, this is the incredible grace of God. When we believe that what he did on the cross for us is not foolishness, but it's power for salvation because God raised him from the dead on the third day. He conquered death, sin, Satan, hell. He conquered it all. And So we can be safe in him and free in him. 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ died once and for all, the just for the unjust. Why? So that he might bring us to God, 
The only way to God is through Jesus Christ. And when we receive Jesus Christ, then we're given a new heart. And we're made a new creation. And we have a new song. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Oh, the invitation for us today is to sing a new song, to be God-glorifying in our worship. It's an antidote to fear, and that comes through Jesus Christ. Our hearts are made brand new, and then there is a song to sing to Him, a song of praise, a song of hope, and a song of joy. Oh, may God be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, that his way might be known on the earth, his salvation among all peoples, and that it might start with each one of us, and then with gratitude that we would pass it on and tell of it again and again and again. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for um, the beauty of this psalm of praise. And thank you for calling us in as worshipers, God. And I pray, Father, that we would glorify your name in song. And that we would glorify your name, God, in the way we tell others about you. God, that we would not have idols that are at the center of our lives, but you alone, God, would be the center of our lives. Father, I pray that we would ascribe glory to you, get recognize who you are. That we would bring our whole selves to you, God. And Father, that we declare among the nations and we're grateful that we get to be a part of so many things happening all over the world, God, that you reign. And then, Father, what a cool thought that we get a glimpse already of creation singing your praise in the way that it moves about. And one day, everything will be set right. The new heavens and the new earth. God, today I pray that we'd not be fearful but we'd sing and tell and keep our eyes on you, God. Will you help us when we're unable? Increase our faith, God, and deepen our love for you in Jesus' name. I'd like for us to be silent before the Lord and pray. And, and, and in your home, we you do this. I believe this can be some of the most important time to really allow God to seal what it is that he's saying. And if there's ways you'd like for us to pray for you uh, or questions that you have, uh, I believe they're going to put up in the chat room or somewhere a way you can connect in uh, and send in ways to pray. We can pray for you or ways we can be a help to you today. And so please don't be shy about responding in that way. So let's be quiet before the Lord. And then with full hearts today, uh, could we just, wherever we are, is... David started out by saying, as awkward as it might seem, as bad as our voices might be or as good as they might be, that, that we could just sing a beautiful chorus to the Lord and that we could be a choir that exalts and worships Him and that that would flow from every house and every car and every backyard and wherever we are. Let's be quiet and then just burst into praise for His name.
time of worship and just what a powerful message from Ross. I hope that you've been filled up and ready to go and sing and tell about how awesome God is. Uh, every day, every week is a great time to invite people in to hear about God's word. But this week in particular, as we head into Easter weekend, we want to amp it up a little bit. And so we are inviting everyone who's a part of 121 to go to our website, uh, 121cc.com forward slash Easter and look for ways to invite people uh, to come and worship with us. We've got an awesome, awesome uh, message and uh, worship time planned for, for everyone this coming Sunday. And so we want everyone to be a part of that. So go ahead and go to our website, invite your neighbors, invite your friends, invite people who don't know about Jesus to come and worship with us uh, next Sunday. Also, this Thursday night, 6.30 p.m., we are going to have a webcast for the Lord's Supper, and we want to invite you to that as well. So go on to our website. We'll be sending out some information as we go along this week on how to join in on that as well. And lastly, we are so thankful for the generosity of, of, of the Church of 121. If we want to invite you to continue, however that works for you, to, to give uh, your tithes and offerings as we go along throughout the rest of this week. So thank you so much. We love you and we'll see you uh, next week.